There are sometimes the really simple ways of working that let us get started a little bit faster, but sometimes if we slow down a little bit, we take time to set things up a little bit more, we can actually get better results and work in a smarter way in the long term and taking different color values and breaking them down into custom properties and treating them a little differently than maybe you have up until now can really allow us to do that and we're going to be exploring that in this video. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy you're here. And if you are new here, my name is Kevin. And here at my channel, we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. So what we're going to be doing in this one is really breaking down. I'm going to be using HSL because I prefer HSL. But you can do all of these same things with the RGB as well. And we're going to be breaking down the values more than you would normally see because it can open up some simple techniques, which we're going to start with at the beginning, where we can break uh, opacity out and give ourselves opacity control, even with the custom variable having the other values stored there and then we're going to break things down even more and look at how easy we can come up with color theming again it can take a little bit of extra setup but that extra setup then opens up some new possibilities that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise so with that out of the way let's go and jump into the code and see what i'm talking about all right so if we look here the way i've set this up is sort of the traditional way that you'll see generally done and this is how even if you've been following me you'll see it done we have a color blue right here, which is my background color that I have set there. And here on my card, I have my background set to the variable of color blue. And that works perfectly well. But the problem here is it doesn't take full advantage of what we can really do. And so what I'm actually going to do is strip out the HSL here, and I'm just going to leave these values. And this is the wonderful thing with CSS custom properties is like you could literally put anything you want in here. It's a custom property. You can... you. Put stuff in there and it's going to work except don't put two semicolons because that might break things um but i can just put these values here and they're just it stores those values for me to use anywhere i want uh, but then when i come down here this var color blue is not working because what we actually need to do is say hsl and wrap that whole thing in an hsl like that so it's hsl and then it's taking those values and plugging them in there and it works and this is more keystrokes to use so you might be saying kevin why would you want to do this you're, you're using more keystrokes to actually get this uh, to be done, but this opens up a really cool possibility. So to just highlight more of what this is really doing, I'm going to throw a background image here. Uh, not a totally realistic one, but we'll put a background image so we can sort of see there's some texture in there. And you know what, let's just say a background size of cover on there as well. And maybe you want a card like this with this nice mountain background. But what you want is actually to keep some of that texture. So you decide you want some opacity. And the issue with if you had the HSL value up here, you can't really add the opacity to that value over here. And so, and of course you can't do an opacity. I'm going to exaggerate here, but if you did an opacity uh, 0.5 to get it to 50%, that's in going to include the text, which we don't want. We just want to lower it, the background of this a little bit. And so the advantage here is because this isn't my whole HSL, where we wouldn't be able to like plug into that, what we can do on this is it's my HSL, which is my var color blue. And then I can actually do an over 0.5 seven let's say for 70 percent opacity and there we see the background color is dropped but it hasn't dropped the other things and that's a little much i'd probably do like a 0.9 just to get that little bit of the mountains coming through maybe even a 9.5 would be perfect here and you may be saying what's this uh, wizardry here with the forward slash this has nothing to do with it being custom properties this is because i'm using the newer color syntax um so if you wanted to you could also keep the commas here and comma comma and then here, replace that with a comma there as well. And that would also work. You can see the mountains still poking through on that background. So I love the new color syntax. And you'll notice I don't have to include the A here, which is also really wonderful, um, because that way you can just keep your values like this and overwrite that like this where you need to. I think that's a really nice way of doing things, but we can even push this a step further. So what we could actually do here uh, also, if you wanted to take this up to the next step, is we could come in and create a hue, a a uh, lightness uh, saturation actually saturation and a lightness here and we could use this instead and you might say this is a little bit more verbose and it definitely is but it does open up some interesting possibilities uh, that we'll look at uh, that are kind of interesting so we're breaking it really into each individual component here instead of keeping it more drawn out so if we wanted to do that, obviously here we'd have to change things up a little bit. So my we'd, we'd have to bring each one of them in. So we'd have my var hue uh, and then we'd have a different one for each one. So view hue and, or satur, saturation. And then the last one here would be my lightness. 
And it's not working now because I forgot to put semicolons here. We're writing some some sass here instead. There we go. So that should help us. There we go. We have the background coming back in. So you might be saying, Kevin, why would you ever want to do that? Well, good question. But let's just say we wanted to come in and we'll look at a few examples, um, not just one here. But what would happen if we wanted to come in here and do another card? And for this, I'm just going to say BG accent. We're just going to play with the hue. And you can even use this to build more like dynamic um, systems than what I'm going to do here. But we're just going to do our BG accent here. And I'm, I'm putting it here in my CSS just so I can easily access it and we don't have to move around. And what we could do here is just change the hue. Uh, not you, we want the hue. And I could just change it. We had 204 before. Let's just do 150 now. Whoops, 150, 150. There we go. And then it changes the color. Or we could make it 250 and it's going to change again to another color. Or we could make it red. We go to 360 and we go that way. And of course, if you prefer RGB, you could do this with RGB values as well. So we can easily play around there with uh, with that to get the different these different results that are coming in like this. And I think that's already pretty neat. Uh, but another thing you'll notice here is like now my color system doesn't really work so well. And we could keep taking advantage of this for this part of it. Because what we could say here is um, if we find those, that's my card uh, position right here where I just had a color. So instead of that, we could do the same thing, HSL. So I just copy and paste what we originally had and we're not, we're going to lose it because it disappears, but it's, it's, it's there. Um, but it's now, the red is now matching. Um, and then I'm just going to move this up actually. We're going to bring it up to the top here. And then what we could do here is uh, because it is getting lost because it's matching the exact same color, but we could come in and then say and play with the lightness here. So we could change the lightness. Uh, the lightness instead will be 70% instead of the 30% it was before. And it's keeping the color that it had. And maybe you go, it's a bit, well, maybe we need to brighten it up a little bit more actually. Um, and you can sort of get the colors coming through and maybe even we want to change the saturation, saturation. And this could be at um, maybe 70% instead of the 100% that it was at before. So it's a little bit more grayed out. But you can see it's it's a bit more dynamic now. And let's just go through all the way back up. And just to show you again, this is, again, in bigger projects where you might have these multiple color schemes like this. Uh, this is where it could really come in. But I left it all the way at the top, my BG accent. I changed my BG accent to 120. And both of those colors, the, this green is shifting as well as the background. I could set this up for my icons as well. I could come and change this original one here as well. So we could come in and do like a 311 here to change the degrees. It'd be more purpley red. And this is changing with it. And again, we could set this up to change everything. There's an underline here that we need to shift and all these other things there. So uh, if you do need more theming and other things like this, these types of things can really help you out. And talking about color, I know that a lot of people really struggle with color schemes on their websites. And if you'd like to find out the easiest way to make a nice looking color scheme for your own website or personal project or whatever it is that you're working on, I have a video right here for your viewing pleasure that dives just into that. And with that, a really big thank you to both Zach and Randy, who are my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.